Good morning and welcome everybody to our communion service on this, the second Sunday of Advent. It's good to be with you all. Our service begins with an Advent hymn, Wake, O oh Wake, with tidings thrilling, and Anne and David will lead us as we sing in our homes. Oh, 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. We're going to light our Advent candles now. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle, reminding us that it is that candle of hope as we look forward to the coming of Christ. And today, we light the second candle, the candle of peace. And we are reminded that Jesus is our peace. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, just and true. To you be praise and glory forever. Of old you spoke by the mouth of your prophets, but in our days you speak through your Son whom you have appointed the heir of all things. Grant us, your people, to walk in his light, that we may be found ready and watching when he comes again in glory and judgment. For you are our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. And we say together, Lord Jesus, light of the world, the prophet said you would bring peace and save your people in trouble. Give peace in our hearts at Christmas and show all the world God's love. Amen. We come now to our prayers of penitence. Let us pray together. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. And so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we receive God's forgiveness. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. O Lord, raise up, we pray, your power and come among us and with great might succour us that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are grievously hindered in running the race that is set before us. So may your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory now and for ever. Amen. Tina will bring our first reading and Peter will bring the gospel and then God's word to us. The first reading is Isaiah chapter 40, 1 to 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, for she has served her turn and her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the grass of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, 
but the word of the Lord will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, Herod of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, Herod of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. Hello, the Lord be with you and also with you. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his path. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt round his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. For our prayer that we will all hear and respond to God's word to us today, I'm going to use a part of the opening to morning prayer during this Advent season that we use each day of the week. Sovereign God, as we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Amen. You're in bed, sound asleep, dreaming. Suddenly, the door bursts open, a bright light shines in on you, and a voice breaks through into your dream, shouting, wake up, get up, you'll be late. And the speaker splashes water into your face to make the point, time to stop dreaming and face the most important day of your life. That's what's happening here in this opening chapter of Mark's Gospel. The Jewish people in the days of King Herod and Caiaphas, they'd heard the stories of God rescuing them from Egypt and bringing them back from exile in Babylon. They knew the promise of a Messiah and they hoped he would come soon and rescue them again, this time from the Romans but they weren't anticipating a prophet 
like John the Baptist telling them to repent. 2,000 years later, when we come to look for the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ at Christmas, we don't usually turn to Mark's Gospel and this strange hairy man striding out of the wilderness, shouting. Doesn't he, doesn't Mark, know that this is a time for the family, not a time for unpleasantness and challenge? What's happening to the angels? What's happened to the angels and the shepherds? Surely they're the real point of Christmas, aren't they? He's gone straight on to something about baptism and the Holy Spirit. Surely that's part of another story. Didn't that come from somewhere else that we're not really interested in? Hmm. No, no thank you. Let's get back to the sweet little baby that we can coo over and then get on with the party. The trouble is that like the Jews of John the Baptist's day, we think we know the end of the story. How it should all work out for our convenience. We think that the time of waiting that we call Advent is all building up to the joyful time of Christmas. You know, the sort of Christmas that is that Boris is so keen to rescue it for us. But actually, it can hardly be called a time of waiting even these days. Uh, the, uh, the trees, the lights, the shopping, the plastic reindeers, all those sort of things. They, that's all happening already. Been going on for weeks. No surprises for us. We know what to expect. And once we've celebrated the birth of the baby, everything can get back to normal until this time next year. We enjoy, we also enjoy the early verses of uh, that uh, Isaiah reading, especially when they're sung as part of Handel's Messiah. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. And every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places are plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all peoples shall see it to together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Wonderful. Ah, but when then, when we read on, we find that that good news only comes after all people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. But the word of our God will stand forever. In other words, when at last we notice that there is no life in us, then we will see uh, the beginning of the transformation of the wilderness. Where there was the empty waste that we've made, there will be paths, heralds shouting, a huge crowd following the glorious King and everywhere he goes, life springing up life that is directly dependent on Jesus and knows it. Yes, comfort and tenderness all right, but only when we realise there is only one source. All the Christmas presents, the tinsel, the plastic reindeer, they're just wilderness without the life that Jesus offers. So perhaps the birth that comes at the end of Advent 
is not really the end, but rather the beginning. That would make sense. After all, most births are uh, about a beginning. When we have the, met this strange God at Christmas, then we shouldn't pack everything away until next year, but rather start the journey with him. Watching him grow, finding out what he's like, waiting to see the story unfold. There's so much waiting in the Christmas, in the Christian story. Each time you think that you've got to the end, you find it's actually another beginning. So after the birth, we have the story of the ministry of Jesus. But that seems to come to an end at the cross. But then there's a new beginning at the resurrection that goes on until the ascension when it all seemed to end again. And then ten days later it all starts up again and this time it's the birth of the church, the Christian community, in, uh, living by the Holy Spirit. The his and the history of that church down the ages has been a series of deaths or near deaths and rebirths, all unexpected and unpredictable. I still remember in the 1970s hearing Tom Smale, lovely Scottish uh, theologian, uh, in a soft Scottish voice, I can't do it, I won't spoil it by trying, but he, he was saying throughout history people have tried to write off the church as irrelevant, as dead, no longer fit for use today, he said, but always on the third day something strange happened. In the third set reading set for today from 2 Peter that we haven't actually read, but in that one Peter suggests that we should be grateful for this odd way of proceeding. Grateful that each ending is actually a new beginning before we have to face the final end. Be grateful for waiting. Stand in your wilderness and start to build a place where righteousness is at home. We're still a long way from that, I'm afraid. Still a long way from that dream. You think you want the coming of Christ. Are you sure you know what you're asking for? So make the most of this period of waiting. Be grateful for Advent. And use it not just to prepare for the birth of the baby, but also to prepare a world where this baby Jesus will actually, uh, uh, righteousness incarnate, will actually feel and be at home. Amen. So let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Reverend Katie will now lead us in our intercessions. Let us pray. Lord, you make a road through the wilderness and desolate places to meet us. We pray for all those whose livelihoods have been destroyed by this pandemic. Remembering especially those who work in the Arcadia group of shops, we pray for them in this time of unknowing, of the waiting, of the worry for their families, the what now, in this time of such uncertainty. Lord, give them, we pray, hope in the darkness and away on that lonely trail. Turn the hearts of those who administer this group to look out for the vulnerable and needy in their charge. As we sit in this wilderness of the pandemic, often so unsure as to how we can help, help to turn our hearts to embrace your promise of redemption, that in you all things will be made new. Give grace to your church to prepare your people in holiness and godliness for your coming among us. God is gracious, your salvation is near. Lord, our moments are held in your eternity and the glory we create is like the passing grass of the field. Give to all leaders of the nations the wisdom and courage to face the longer vision. We pray for Boris Johnson as he has to make uncomfortable decisions for us as a nation. May they be made in light of good scientific advice and thought and not out of appeasement to others. Give courage to those who have to make these difficult decisions in the face of unbearable pressure from our consumerist world. Give them eyes that look to a better future for all in our world. God is gracious, your salvation is near. Lord, you honour your creation by your presence. We give thanks for all with whom we share life's joy and sorrows, rest and labour. We pray for our community here in Backwell, Chelvey and Brockley and for all the community of Christians who journey with us in these places. We pray for all who minister in your name, that they speak your words of comfort and joy into the lives of others and proudly proclaim your good news in the waiting. God is gracious, your salvation is near. Lord, in our strength and weakness your glory is made known. Give patient hope to all who are ill or recovering from treatment. Particularly in this community, we remember Joe Cleves, Sheila Llewellyn and Clark, Jennifer Hole, Sue Ashman, Cora Ann Gardner, Carol Helen, James Varakas, Becky Jones and Anne Taylor. Reach out to them, Lord, and all who we know with your healing touch. God is gracious. Your salvation is near. Lord, comfort your people in their grief and distress with the promise of your, un of your saving love. Gather to yourself all who have died, remembering Mary Griffiths, whose funeral was on Wednesday, Gordon Tovey and Mary Rome. Also, we remember the loved ones of those whose anniversary of death falls at this time, among them Christopher Hooley. Bring us with them 
to rejoice in your salvation. God is gracious. Your salvation is near. As we offer our prayers this day to your gracious love and compassion, we say, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we lit our second candle, we have been reminded that Jesus is our peace. And as we share God's peace now, may that be true for each one of us. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Collies will now lead us in our second hymn, Long Ago, Prophets New. As we have been thinking about the Lord's peace being with us, we know now as we come to our communion that he is indeed the bread of life who feeds and nourishes us in his presence. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you 
and singing. Praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary, the mother of our Lord, Saint Andrew, Saint Bridget, Saint Nicholas, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour Christ has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread.
draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Jesus died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Father in heaven, who sent your Son to redeem the world and will send him again to be our judge. Give us grace so to imitate him in the humility and purity of his first coming, that when he comes again, we may be ready to greet him with joyful love and firm faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Emma will lead us in our closing hymn, that hymn of commitment, O Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. to worship with you all today wherever you are 
So may God's blessing be with you and those you love and care for in these coming days. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and care for this day and forevermore. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting and filled with joyful expectation. Amen. <laughs>